Hi guys, Jeff Miller again from Speedbinder. Uh, in this video we're going to step through some techniques that we use in Adobe Illustrator to create the design that you see on your screen right now. This is something that uh, we use on binders, but uh, obviously you can use it on anything, and uh, it's kind of cool. So let me show you how we create these, and uh, you can decide if it's something you might try on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a, a blank template. Now this one happens to be a, a one inch office size earth binder cover, but uh, you know obviously this will work on about anything. So the first thing I'm going to do is if you go here we've got this uh, this wooden background, this sort of cherry wood image, and I, what I want to do is I want to load that up on our on our template first. So I'm just going to start by placing that file. There it is, wood background. And I'm not particularly concerned about you know lining it up, other than I want to make sure I stretch it past the bleed uh, in every respect. So and then I you know I stretch it to make it fit. Now the the trick here is I want to create three copies of this that are right on top of each other. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste in place so it goes right on top of the the initial one. And I want to do that twice. So now if you look here over in our layers palette, I've actually got three instances of that uh, of that file that are all placed exactly on top of each other. So we've got that. Now what I want to do next is I'm going to go ahead and lock that layer and create a new one on top of it because I want to create these rectangles that are going to hold the other artwork. And I want to you know, have a little freedom to mas massage those as I see fit. So what I'm going to do next is uh, in my new layer with the, uh, the first layer locked, I'm just going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to hold down the shift key because I want the, the one on top that holds the artwork, I want that to be square. And I'm just going to click and drag. There we go. I'm going to click and drag a rectangle. I'm just kind of eyeballing it in as far as the size goes. Um, doesn't have to, I mean, there's no hard and fast rules on that. <clears throat> just want it to be, you know, something about that big. And now I'm going to, I want another one that's down below it that's the same width but not as high. So probably the easiest way to do this, I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then I'm just going to drag that to, you know, about that height. Again, we're just kind of guessing here. It doesn't have to be real exact. Now I want to line these up perfectly. So I'm going to select them both and then second click on the top one so I freeze it into position and then align it uh, you know, horizontally. So now they're perfectly lined up. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to create another rectangle around each one of those that's exactly a half an inch bigger uh, on all the sides. So I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path and I want the offset to be a half an inch so I'll put in 0.5 inches here, hit OK, and you see it creates another, you know, rectangle right around the first one that's exactly a half an inch. And I'll do the same thing over for the one down below. There we go. So now we've got a total of four rectangles. Okay. So the next step is we need to, um, you know, we're going to create. Let's go back to here. We want to create this outside. You know the wooden, uh, uh, you know border, but then you see we want to get it, we want to cut it out along these paths, and we want to give it some shadowing underneath to give it that sense of depth. All right, so the way we're going to do that is go back to the file we're working on. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab the the larger rectangles, the outside ones, and I'm going to grab them both, and then I want to do is I want to combine them together into a single compound path. So I select them both and hit make compound path. So now they're one entity. You see if I select, you know, I can get I get them both. It's, it's basically one thing, so let me undo that. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to create I'm going to create a mask that's going to end up being a clipping mask on this wooden background. So the way I'm going to do that is I want to create another rectangle. And this one here I want to just make it really big so that it's more than you know, the size of the artboard entirely. It's really big. So I'll just 
create that rectangle. Let me just give it some arbitrary color so that it shows up a little easier. And I'm going to send it to the background or send it backwards. So now you can see here's our compound path sitting on top of that big rectangle we just created. So I'm going to select the compound path. I'm going to shift select that big rectangle. Now I've got them both selected. Now I'm going to go into my Pathfinder menu and I want this option right here, the minus front option. So what that does is that takes that compound path in the front and it cuts it out <clears throat> so this becomes our mask. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to use that mask to mask the uh, one of these uh, instances of the background photo that we've created. So we happen to be able to, we can just click through and, and uh, if we select right here, with, you know, if we hold down the shift button, we'll select that one. You see now we have one of our photos selected and we still have our mask selected. So I'm just going to right click and do a make clipping mask. And now, let me clean this up a little bit. I'm going to show you what we've got. I'm going to hide the bottommost layer. So you see here we have that wooden frame masked out in such a way that the two larger rectangles are visible. So to show you the effect here, I'm going to select that. Now I'm going to go to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. Now the particular options that you choose to use on this, you know, you can play with it a little bit. But uh, I'm going to do about a 0.1 inch offset and a 0.1 inch blur. And we'll see how that drops in here. And that'll give us that shadowing effect on the inside right here. Very nice. Now it also gives us a shadow here on the outside of the, the rectangle. But that's beyond the artboard, beyond the bleed line. So we don't... Uh, you know, we won't need to worry about that. Okay, now the next step I'm going to do is I want to take this piece here, the first square that we created, and I want to use that as a clipping mask for this picture, this painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm, going to, um, I'm in that layer right now, and I'm going to place that file there it is. Now what I do, what I do is I'm just going to line it up so that it's just a little bit bigger than that uh, the square that we're going to use to mask it. So I'll go let, like so and then stretch it out just a little bit. Okay, so now it's in front of the, it's, a, it's the correct size, but it's in front of the, uh, the, the square we're going to use to mask it. So I'm going to um, send it backwards however many times I need to until I see there we go, until I see that, uh, that white square. So now I can shift click on the, right, the white square. So now I have the painting and the square selected. I'll right click, make a clipping mask, and there I've masked it to exactly that position. Now what I want to do to complete the effect here to give that a little bit of depth is I'll select it again and I'll give this a drop shadow using the same command and the same options that we did before. So now, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so the next step on this is we want to use this square here to create a clipping mask for the, uh, you know, for the, the, the wood background again. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to make visible the background layer again. And I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to select. Well, probably here's the easiest way to do it. I can just shift and just click right here and I'll select one of those uh, background instances of the wooden photo again. So now again I can just right click and make a clipping mask. So now it kind of seems like it disappeared but what I've done is I've got a little clipping mask right here of that same wooden background and what that's going to allow me to do is to create the shadow effect that I'm going to need right over here in this area here. That's how I create that shadow effect. So. I'll select that, and again we're back to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and we'll see the shadow pop in right there. So now what we've got, that's why we had three instances of the photo in the first place, because now we have one instance that was used on the big clipping mask around the full outside of the design. We've got another instance that was used on this smaller clipping mask, and then the final instance that's still there 
is providing the background down sort of below the shadow, if you will. And you can see how that works. If I hide the lower layer, you can see that that uh, changes that look there. <clears throat> so now what we typically do when we use this design <clears throat> on a project is, you know, we'll put some text down here. So, you know, modern art gallery and go ahead and size this up as is appropriate. Make it white so that it shows up a little bit. Now let's position it by some alignment options. And there we go. Now the other thing that we do oftentimes, as you'll see on our final output here, is maybe we want a little different color in the background around this frame area just to make that pop a little more. So if you want to do something like that, what we'll do is we'll go down to the, the bottom layer because we want it to be on top of that the farthest back instance of the photo, but we want it to be underneath all the stuff that we've been creating. So we'll just go and put that in here like so, and then we can adjust the color anything we want it to be and get whatever effect we want. And if we want to, we can go ahead and drag that down and make an effect like that. Or, you know, we can get rid of it entirely. It's uh, strictly a matter of preference at that point. So anyway, that is that. This would be something like, uh, that's, that's fairly nice. Something like that would be an example of how we might finish that up. That's an example of uh, some of the illustrator techniques that we use when we're creating these custom binders. If you have any questions, you can always give us a call here at Speedbinder, 888-338-0924. Hope this was helpful. Look forward to talking soon. Take care.